All right. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to week five. This week, we're getting ready for you to turn in your first major essay. Okay. And so I'm going to go over uh, where to submit it. Uh, I'm going to preview one, one more time the actual assignment because looking at some people's rough drafts, I get the feeling that maybe we're not really paying attention to what we're supposed to be writing about. And then also I'm going to go over the um, sort of how to edit a person's rough draft because that is the assignment for this week. If we look at the 1102 schedule and assignments, all right, the due date sheet that I posted, which some people are still not looking at, even though I've gone over it for four previous weeks and now the fifth week. Okay. This week we have for the week five, we have edit someone's paper. Okay. This is due on the 12th. And this week I'm going to go over proper MLA formatting review. I've already talk, talked about it once. And then how to edit a paper. Okay. If you have not download, downloaded the due dates and assignments sheet, oh wait, I just realized I did not share that. Here we go, let's see. There you go, now you can see it. This sheet right here, due dates and assignments, this Word document, okay? This is this week right here. I have what I'm going over in my in my lecture for week five. And then I have the assignment for this week, edit someone's paper and the due date. If you have not downloaded this document yet, you need to go to start here. And it's right here. I keep getting emails for people talking about assignments and things that are due based upon the calendar, some calendar that, that, that you're looking at. And I keep each week emphasizing, I'm not, you don't follow any other calendar, anything else that's not on this sheet. This is the only document that you should be using to figure out what is due and when it's due, okay? All right. So in lessons, you were, um, you've been working on SA1. And with SA1, you're supposed to have read a short story. Any short story you wanted to. Now I provided you some short stories. See, okay. I provided you some, some short stories that if you wanted to read, you could, or you could read your own short story if you wanted to find one, okay. And when you read the short story, you're simply going to be doing this. You're going to write a literary analysis essay over a short story of your picking. You will read the story, analyze the theme, the tone or style, and perform a literary criticism on it. What are some of the deeper messages it is sending? Okay. Your essay is supposed to be an MLA formatting and contain outside sources that supported your interpretation. Now, in the previous lessons, I've gone over all of these different things. Um, there's a whole lesson on theme, style, and tone, point of view, okay? Um, in the previous lectures, each week, I've gone over specific information that will help you with this essay. Every single lecture that I've gone over um, has been to help you with this essay. So everything I'm, I've discussed in week one, week two, week three, week four applies to your essay. I went over quotes and research in week four, okay? I went over how to write paragraphs also in week four, all right? Um, so went over themes and symbolism and critical literacies in week two and week three. All that applies to your, to your essay. So you got to make sure that you are 
following along and that you've watched all those lectures and that you apply all that information to it, okay? Okay. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is how your essay should look in terms of MLA formatting. So let's see, share. Um, we're gonna use this, this sample essay, okay? First thing is we're going to need to have last name and page numbers. I see that, that this is pretty close, okay? We're gonna double click in here. If you double click the top right hand corner, that will get you to the um, header area. The la your last name should be all capitalized, okay? And if you don't know how to insert page numbers, let's say you didn't have page numbers, and you double click in there, you'd go to insert, page number, top of page, and then it needs to be the far right. Click that. Sometimes it deletes your last name, so you just have to re-enter it. Okay. And now page numbers are inserted in every page. You can't manually type it. If you manually type it, then it won't be it won't be uh, gray. It'll be black. So you need you need you can't just go to the top of the page and <laughs> tap over and type it in because if you, if you did that. It's obvious that you do not insert them because they're too low and they're black. Okay. You need to actually double click, and go into insert, and then do page number. Okay. All right. So, Richard Ellison. All right. So, so student name, my name, class. Then what comes is the due date. And the due date for this essay is the 19th, 9 September 19, oh, <laughs> September 19th, uh, 2021. Okay. Now, notice here there's a line, there's additional space between the heading in the title. There should be no space. So you gotta hit delete. Titles, the first letter of each word in the title, unless it's an article, small little, a small little you know, word like A or the, but all, you know, for the most part, they're all uppercase. So like the, the first, so these capitalize here because it's the first word in the title. And then the M and the B are capitalized, and the S is capitalized. The A does not need to be capitalized. The message behind the story. That's our title. Okay. So next we have, we noticed that this, this student did a good job of having their paper double spaced. You can highlight all of it. Go to home, paragraph. So double, correct. Before zero, after zero. That's exactly correct. That's exactly how it should look. Perfect. And then you notice this though. On the left side, we have these straight lines. Okay. So if you notice the left side, how all the lines line up and they go straight down. Okay. And um, that looks good. But on the right side here, we have all these jagged lines, all these jagged, jagged, it's like a mountain range. So what you'll do is uh, select all, control A, go up here to justify and click it. You see now, look, the right-hand side is just the same as the left-hand side. It's all smooth, okay? Highlight this, your title, and make that center again. Great, okay? Okay. Um, so just looking through this quickly, I noticed some things. One, if you recall uh, lecture four, I go over quotation marks. Short stories need to be in quotation marks. 
See, this person did it here. They highlight that they did quotation marks there, but they did not do quotation marks here, okay? And then I notice here, these quotes, all these quotes, quotes should not be italicized. Quotes are just in quotation marks. They don't need to be italicized. Okay. And then like I went over my lecture um, back in week four, you don't need to have the title of the short story in your, in your um, parenthetical citations. If you notice, let's see new share. If you go back to le lectures, um, integrated quotes, let's see. Oh no, here, re week four, research and quotes. Open that up. Uh, new share. Okay, I posted this for y'all. Let's go down. Titles and quotation marks. So the short stories are in titles. And then when we do in-text citations, it's just the last name. And if, if there is a page number, there might not be a page number. We're supposed to do the last name. You, you don't do... Um, you don't do um, the first name. So go back to this essay we're editing, we're looking at, okay. Hemingway, correct. The C change by Ernst, that's incorrect. That's not what I taught. That's not what I went over in the lecture. That's not what's in the PowerPoint, okay. Uh, the, the italics, should not be there, okay? So this student needs to do some, some changes, some fixes on his or her uh, work. Okay. So I'm not gonna edit all of it, but this is just the MLA part. The MLA part of your essay is like 30%, so it needs to be correct. You gotta have your last name capitalized with page numbers correctly inserted. Your whole paper needs to be Times New Roman, 12. Paragraph, double. Zero before, zero after. Okay. It needs to be justified with this button. Your title needs to be centered. Boom. Done. No additional lines. That's MLA. Okay. All right. Great. Now. This week, you are supposed to be going to um, essay one. So we going down to the peer review discussion board. So all these essays, okay? You pick an essay to um, to edit, okay? Well, let me go back. Actually. Then you will scroll down, go back to essay one. And if you wait one second, something's going to magically appear here. Uh, peer review rubric. Okay, you download this. And when you download this, um, This document is going to pop up, editing a paper, okay? It's 1102 sheet. You're going to type in your name. You're going to type in the person's paper that you're editing, okay? And then you just go straight through here, and you just check that this person has everything, okay? All right, so like uh, MLA formatting, you read uh, last name capitalized and page numbers in top right corner of each page, yes or no. Heading correct, yes or no. It has the writer's first and last name, Mr. Byers, English 1101. Oops, that should be 1102, so you should fix that. 
uh, the due date, which is actually not that date either. Um, it's the correct date, September. What was it? What did I say? Um, I'm making something up. What's the date? What's the date? What's the date? What's the due date? September 19th. 19 September is what it should say. Okay. Yes or no, double space, no additional space between lines. Every paragraph is indented. Title, all first letters of non article in on, et cetera, words should be capitalized. So, what you do is you, you read, and literally, if their last name is capitalized and page numbers is in the top right corner of each page, then highlight yes. The heading is correct. All this is correct. Yes. Let's say they're missing the date. Say no. Then highlight what's missing. The date is wrong. Is it double spaced? Yes. Uh, no additional spaces between lines. It looks, it looks that way. Okay. Um, is every paragraph indented? Actually, maybe you're like, oh, the last paragraph is not indented. You know. Okay. Type in final paragraph not indented. Okay. Title. Is it correct? Yes or no? All right. Introduction. The introduction. Okay. Person's introduction should, should have six or more lines. Okay. It should be about a short story. Is it in fact about a short story? The introduction should contain a summary of the story. And then there should be a thesis statement. Okay. So for example, uh, this person, in The Sea Change by Ernest Hemingway, we see a theme of a man's ego, sexuality, conflict, and forgiveness. The short novel is in the third person of the narrator unknown, the main character, Phil. All right, it's also real fast. This is just me, personally. It's not a short novel, it's a, it's a story. Ernest Hemingway writes a brief but detailed conversation station between two lovers whose relationship has ended at the end of a summer in France. In the story, the writer seems to explore a subject that would have been controversial for his time about bisexuality. The man's pride seems to be making it difficult for him to accept that his girlfriend is leaving him for another woman. Okay, so like this is, yes, this is a, it's about one story and it is um, a short, it, it's a summary of it, okay? So I would say, okay, it's more than six lines, yes. It's about a short story, yes. There is a summary of the story, yes. Contains a thesis statement. Well, um, the sea change by Ernest develops by Hemingway develops a theme that a man's ego can hinder him from reaching an uh, interior transformation. Uses a third-person tone and feministic undertones. Yes, that's a thesis statement. Okay, so like you, the 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 editor, you are not editing for uh, if it's correct or not. You are just simply saying, is it there? Is it there? You don't have to give feedback. You don't have to say, this is how you can make it better. Yes, it's there. No, it's not there. Okay. And you're just going to go through and you're just going to highlight yes, no, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Paragraph one. Okay. It, does it cover one of these things? So theme, tone style, literary criticism, or neither? Well, we go back to it. In the short story, he praises a young man whose lover leaves him for a woman. At the beginning of the story, the characters argue with one another, blah, blah, blah. However, the message here is related to the character's identity and sexuality. The character Phil is having a hard time grasping the truth about his girlfriend's sexuality. Okay, so this is about truth. Uh, Hemingway is telling us that he had transformed into a mature man. Okay. So I would read this and I'll say, okay, well, sure. It's about theme. Okay. Is there a claim? Yes. Is there support? Well, I would read it. And I would remember our conversation we had about support. 
in that there's summary. And clearly there's summary, okay? And I noticed that he says that it's perversion when referring to her lover, to the, her loving, her loving, her lover, another woman. However, he seems to come to his own when he begins to understand the situation. That's interpretation. So there's a good amount of interpretation and summary. Okay. So like you, like I said, you're not the teacher, so you don't have to kill yourself in saying really. Um, trying to figure out, is it really 20%, is it 30%, is it 50%? You just need to find signs that yes, there is support and yes, there is analysis, okay? Yes, 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 okay? Same thing with body paragraph two. Is, it, is there about, is it about theme, tone, style, or literary criticism? And just go through and, and click yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, no. And then you're going to save it. You're going to save it and you're going to go back to the discussion board, find the person that whose it is, and you are going to reply to them and give it to them. Okay. You're going to give it to them uh, to show that, that, you know, here is the rubric. Okay. Here's the rubric for uh, the say for the, um, for my peer review. And then hopefully they'll read it. And they'll look to see where you put no, and they'll go back through and they'll try to fix it. Okay. That's it. I mean, that's what you're doing this week. Some of these essays will be easier to read than others. For example, I read this essay. And this person needs a lot of work. This is, um, first off, their, their rough draft says library research assignment, which is incorrect. Okay. And then we have the edge of having viable social media platforms. Okay. Introduction. We shouldn't have anything that says introduction or body paragraphs or thesis. Okay. And uh, if you notice, people of different races, ages, statuses are challenged with social misconducts, offenses, violations at different degrees in the course of work, school, play, blah, blah, blah. It is for this reason the law and justice system exist to address and redress violations or punishment. I mean, this is all. Um, this is all about. This does not talk about a short story. So, if I was filling out the sheet, I would be saying, "Okay, well, introduction about a short story." No, it's not about a short story. There is no summary. There's not a thesis. Body paragraph one. It's not about theme or tone. So we have this paragraph in the book, The Awkward Thoughts of W. Kamal Bell, the author and his wife, Melissa, did this, no one did, the couple further posted the experience, blah, blah, blah. So this is a summary of a story, yes. But then it goes back into social media platform can be defined as an informative platform that consists on different webs. This has nothing to do with a short story. Globally, social media platforms are used in playing a dynamic role in organizing the public against any unhappy incident or government policies. Once again, this has nothing to do with the story. And as I'm reading through this, you see that I would see that there's no more reference to that short story. So this paper is like totally wrong. It's totally wrong. And so if I was editing this paper and I was a peer, I would... Um, I would be clicking on my sheet. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, let's see here. Um, no, and no, and no. Okay, no, 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 no. And I'll send it back to them. And hopefully they'll read it before they submit that paper and be like, oh, wow, I totally screwed up. Okay. All right. So that's the gist of it, of it all. That's, um, that is what we are doing. That's uh, for this week, you are.
uh, doing a peer edit of someone's paper, you are filling out the rubric and you're posting the rubric. Okay. It's not your job to fix all the problems. You are just editing it. Okay. Um, and then you are to read what someone wrote about your paper and try to make sure that your paper fits what I'm looking for, that it's about a short story, that's analyzing a short story and it's covering three things, and that the grammar is correct, the punctuation is correct, the citations are correct, the use of, of, of um, research is correct, all those things, okay? You have any questions, just send me an email, let me know. All right. All righty, sounds good.